boys and geeks, and welcome again to Dread War Gaming. In today's episode, we're going to be having a little look at magnet sticks, because a lot of you guys want to start magnetizing your tanks, vehicles and stuff like that, in order that you can load out the weapons differently in case the rules change and stuff like that. But when you're doing that, you come across a problem. Now sometimes you might grab hold of a magnet, realize that another magnet will attach to it. So you'll stick that one in, you stick the other one on a turret or a weapon, for example, and they work fine. And then you work on another one, and then you realize you want to swap the weapons around, and all of a sudden you realize, oh no, the weapons are opposing. I've put the magnets on different on this one than I did the last one. Now the way to get over that is to have yourself a magnet stick. That way, every magnet you put on, you can guarantee that the polarities are always going to be the same. So without further ado, let's take a look at building a magnet stick. Okay guys, so magnet sticks. Here are two magnets. And as you see, they come together at this point. If I switch them around, as most of you would know, they will be opposing, so they won't go. So what you don't want to do is have it so that all of, say you're wanting multiple turrets, or as I've got for this, weapons, right? You want to make sure that the the positive is always up or the negative is always up. Either way, you want to always have your polarities the same. So, as you see, these magnets will snap on the bottom of there like that, but they won't go the other way around. But that is because that is my positive upwards, all right? So this weapon, I know, will also, it will also click on there. So the same polarity I've used for the bottom of the turret I've used for the weapons so all of my weapons that means that the magnet inside there that is my positive facing up and that is the negative and the positive facing through just imagine it like a, a current riding up and through something so you always want them the same so in order to do that the best way to do it is to have a magnet stick because these magnets once you've put them down and you go to glue you pick it back up again, you can very easily put them the wrong way around. So just to check, just before you glue, or just before you go putting it inside of a little hole and sealing it in there and making it impossible to get back out, you want to make sure that you've got the polarities right. So, to make your magnet stick, you want a couple of magnets. Now, the size and strength of them isn't really all that very important. What is important is that you have some plastic tube that will fit them into. So this one, they fit just perfectly, just about slide through, just a little bit. But they are, trust me, just the right size. There's only a little bit of movement, just a tiny bit. See, a little bit of play. Can we focus? There we are, just a little bit of play in there. Not very much. So, what we're gonna do to stop it rolling out, and we're gonna have one at each end. So we have positive and negative, and we're gonna mark it afterwards, once we paint it. But what we're going to do is also cut a shorter one that we can put inside. Now, my magnets, what you want to do is you want to measure how deep they are there. So what is the depth of your magnet? Mine are two millimeters deep. So I've cut a short stick at 100 millimeters. Then I've cut my larger stick at 104 millimeters. So therefore, it's four millimeters longer than the shorter one. So there's a little bit of a gap each side being perfectly two millimeters, which is what the depth of these are. So obviously you can see where this is going. This stick is gonna go inside of this stick and it's gonna provide support for the magnets and somewhere to glue them against and put some green stuff in there as well just to steady it all together but we'll use glue we'll use green stuff it'll be a permanent thing and then you can put this into your pen holder or in your drawer or wherever it is you keep your knife and your other bits and bobs and it can forever be your magnet stick and one thing that is very useful in creating your magnet stick because cutting plastic tube is awkward if you do it with just a knife if you're just trying to mark it out with your metal ruler there goes the magnets uh, and you just try and cut it with your knife, what you'll end up doing is you'll, you'll collapse the tube if you're, if you're not really careful, or you'll end up with a non-straight line, more likely than not, because 
as you cut down with your knife, you end up going at a different angle. And although you're trying to cut straight, it doesn't always happen, especially with the last bit. So the best thing to do is get yourself a plumber's, a plumber's, <laughs> can't even say what I used to be, a plumber's pipe slice, right? This is a new one because I couldn't find my old one. It's gone missing. But basically, open it up like this. And this is good for cutting copper. So it's absolutely man enough to do plastic tube. Don't you worry about that. So you put your tube in on top of these two runners here, see? And then you've got a blade here. So if you've measured along your stick and you've drawn a line where you want to cut, you can line it up with that little blade and you just tighten this down a little bit and you proceed to twist and it will start scoring it. See the little wheels moving around at the moment. If I put a little bit more pressure on it, it starts to cut. And then you just keep applying a little, tiny little bit more pressure and keep twisting and it will give you your nice cut. I don't want to cut this one because this is already cut to the right size, but I just want to show you the pipe slicer. It's very worthwhile. Cost you about five to 10 euros, maybe 15. Um, so in the UK, about a tenner at most. Very useful thing to have in your toolkit. Um, the other things you're going to need, obviously, is a metal ruler for marking and measuring. Don't really need the knife. So, let's get mixing some green stuff. Now, whenever I'm mixing green stuff, I will always cut out the middle bit because that little mixed bit is no good. So, we keep the yellow, we keep the blue. But that little mixy bit, that can bugger off. We don't want that. Right, so next, you make two little pointed little sausages. And they basically need to be pointed enough that they're gonna thread down into the end of your small tube and stick out a bit. So I'm gonna put that in there. Stick out a bit like that. Basically, that's just gonna fill that gap a little bit and give us something for the other green stuff to stick to when we get it sticking out. That bit's a bit much. Break it off. There we go, so we've got a bit there in the end of that, oh god, I can't focus. There we are, green stuff. Excuse my dirty nails. Green stuff. Might put a little bit more on the end of there. Break a little bit off of that. Put that in there. Just to give us something to stick to. All right. Okay, next step. Poly cement, okay. Don't need to be too pretty about it. Just slop a load all over this stick, as much as you like. Don't really matter. Got to get it to come out. It doesn't want to come out. Come on. I only had you working yesterday. Right. There's a trick for this. <clears throat> oh. Now you work. Right, stick that in there. Cool. Excuse the fumes. <coughs> Blimey. Right. <coughs> okay, so that's going to go in there. We're going to want to make sure that we've got room for a magnet each side. So just push it in a little bit. Um, yeah. This wants to definitely have room for a magnet each side. So it does that side. That side okay right we'll just leave that to set so I've also made two little balls of green stuff that I'm going to be putting in the end as I put the magnets in that tube is almost set in there almost there so what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the test piece the one that I know the polarity is correct on we're gonna get our magnets we're gonna stick them on like that so then we're gonna call that north the positive or positive or negative. So you can either mark it with an N like that or a positive. And then on the opposite side, do an S or negative. And that way, just to mark it for now, we're going to mark it up later properly when we paint it. So now you're going to take your 
super glue. I'm using Gorilla Super Glue Gel because the gel is uh, going to not run down the length of this. It's going to stay sort of where I want it. Okay, so let's go about this. That's is the Northy one. So we're going to plop my little bit of green stuff in there and do the same on the Southy one. Right, now then, let's get a little bit of super glue. Give it a little shake. Hope it comes out. Right. So, take a magnet, facing upwards as it should be. I'm going to place that on there. I'm very careful that I'm not getting super glue on my finger. Although I'm used to doing that, so it's not a big deal. And then I'm just going to push it down with the end of a pen, uh, paintbrush so I'm not getting it all over my fingers. Okay, now I'm going to work very quickly to get the other side in because I don't want one side to be pushing the other side out. So, there we are. And I'm going to take it the opposite way up. So that's negative. Push that in, level it off. It's nice and level. That one's going to stick out a bit. All right. Nice. Nice. Right. So now, nice and level, or level enough. Could do better. Could do better. Oh, actually, it, is. It, it just doesn't look it on the screen. Yeah, this, this side needs to go down just a little bit. Being, if we're being fussy, all right, on this side, ah, she's good. Maybe just a bit on this edge. All right, there is our magnet stick, boys and girls. Now that it's set, I've given it a spray. So one side's red, one side's white. I've probably tidied up that middle bit a little bit with a little bit of uh, thinners and a cloth or something. Um, or a sharp knife or something like that. But yeah, that's basically it. So you've got one side is your positive and one side is your negative. So when you get something like your um, turret, you can see it will snap on there. Definitely the right way up. And it will repel on that side. So there you go. That's your magnet stick. It helps you figure out which way round all your magnets are before you stick them on. So what I would do is when you're using a bunch of magnets, just stick a stack of them on there and then you know to pull them from that side and which way is up. So there you go. And uh, I did my finger there. That wasn't a modeling accident. That was actually a dreadlock needle accident whereby I uh, pushed my dreadlock needle through a dreadlock and in to my finger just by the knuckle of the joint there. So I'm really deep in and it was behind my head. So I had my finger stuck behind my head, attached to a dreadlock, and I was pulling and it wasn't coming out. It was really, really in there. So I couldn't uh, even see it in a mirror, so I had to just go like that, and it really ripped, and it really is sore. So that's what's going on there. It's painful. Okay, so that's all I have to say about the magnet stick. Um, you can decorate it differently yourself, of course. Um, you can go gluing them just onto the end of a stick, but they're gonna fall off. So that's the way I, I would suggest you make one. Um, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for all the future uploads. Thanks guys. Okay guys, just a little bonus section for you here. Um, I often, when I send a parcel to somebody else in a foreign country, I quite often send them a few little bits and bobs from Ireland, you know, a few little Irish eccentricities or some little things from my own childhood from the UK because a lot of UK and Irish stuff are the same although there's some bits here in Ireland that are different to in the UK and there's some things I can't get that I miss even so when people in the UK are sending me stuff I often ask them to send me things that I miss uh, Yorkshire tea is something I'm always asking people to get for me you can get it here in some places and when I find it I buy as much of it as I possibly can um, but someone went to the States and they got me some bits and bobs so I thought I'd try them out and I thought if any of you guys want to do something with me whereby you send me some treats and snacks and stuff that are found in your native country and I send you some bits, 
contact me in the in the comments. We'll do something like that. So this is the first time we've ever tried these things here. So what we've got, we've got a Tootsie Roll, which I've heard of them. Um, I just never had, ever had one. Uh, they contain uh, sugar as the main ingredient, corn syrup. Oh, guys, are so bad. Palm oil, so bad. Oh, condensed <laughs> skimmed milk, cacao, whey, soy lectin, artificial and natural flavors. Dudes, oh God, you Americans, you'll eat anything, wouldn't you? Eh? Right, so that's one thing. We'll try that in just a second. And then we've got peanut butter cookie dough bites for the peanut butter lovers. Bite-sized peanut butter cookie dough in creamy milk chocolate. Uh, they contain, where's the ingredients? Oh my God, there's a lot of ingredients. Milk chocolate, which is made of sugar, cacao, blah, blah, blah. Um, Vanillin, an artificial flavour. Uh, peanut center, powdered sugar, dextrose, peanuts roasted in peanut oil. Partially hydrogenated vegetable oil. Glycerin, high fructose cream, uh, corn syrup, not good. Uh, oh God, there's loads of other nasties and stuff. Yeah, well, I'm gonna give, <laughs> give them a go. And also we've got some uh, Arizona, a Brooklyn original, cherry juices, Ricky. What? Cherry, cherry limes, Ricky. I don't know. Sparkling cherry lime, yeah. yeah it's limes, that's really bad. Uh, graphic, if you can't read it. Ingredients, carbonated, uh, high fructose corn syrup. Oh, God, you've got it in everything, guys. I mean, we, I don't think that's even legal over here, that stuff. Like, in our products, anyway. Alright, let's open that up. Pour something out. Sounds nice, though. Cherry and lime-like. I mean, that should be nice. Artificially flavoured, though, so... <laughs> oh, it's nice, actually. That is very refreshing as well. Oh. It's a large can though, I dare say that it really played trouble with your belly if you drank all of that. Uh, right, so. Let these open. Don't they have a, oh, they do, they have a clever opening corner that probably doesn't cleverly open. Yeah, it's one of the cardboard tabs that you push in and it doesn't tab. Ugh. There we are. The bag inside anyway. Oh my god, that's not very much, is it? That's pitiful. That's terrible. God, less than half a packet. All right, let's see what all the fuss is about, shall we? You just sit and eat in the cinema from a big bag. I mean, oh, but they would cost you. It would be quite expensive, I think, if you wanted to eat a big bag. Um, in the old, old, old days, there used to be um, in some penny sweet shops or in the in the big jars, there used to be something just like this. Some like really plain chocolate with some kind of filling that tasted very similar to this. So they were like, you get like all of that. Like when I was a kid, when I was a young kid, like you get all of that for about 10, 20p. <laughs> I don't know, I think that's what that cost anyway. Okay, let's refresh. All right, Tootsie Roll. This one I'm looking forward to actually because it's an iconic one. Oh, hello. Oh. Oh. Looks like you're possibly meant to be able to break it along these ridges. That's what I want to do. I think that's 
what they're designed for, surely. Come on. Come on, that's toffee-ish. Okay. Oh, that's tough. Doesn't really hit you with flavour though. Um, it tastes a bit plasticky, if I'm being honest with you. It actually has a taste of plastic. There's definitely a chemical resin plastic sort of taste to it. I know that from chewing a lot of plastic. <laughs> It tastes like Games Workshop sprue. Mmm. That's not good. It's funny. It's got no description. I noticed about looking at the packet. There's nothing to say like a toffee coated in chocolate or anything like that. They can't describe it probably because how do you describe that without saying it tastes like chewing plastic? I think it's all stuck to the inside of my teeth. It's probably completely unnatural. Guys, sort your shit out. Honestly, whoever wants to play this game with me would get much nicer crap than this. <laughs> Sorry, whoever it was that bought me this stuff, but yeah. Um, we have nicer sweets than that in Europe, I can swear it. <laughs> so uh, yeah, play the game. Let me know.